River City Junction. <coughs> River City next station stop. You're crazy with the heat. Credit's no good for a notion, Bill. Board! All aboard! Why not? What's the matter with credit? It's old fashioned. Charlie, you're an anvil salesman. You're from Give Credit? No, sir. Nor anybody else. River City. River City next. Cash for the merchandise. Cash for the bucks and cooks. Cash for the cotton goods. Cash for the hard goods. Cash for the soft goods. Cash for the fancy goods. Cash for the noggins and the pickings and the frickings. Cash for the hogshead, cask and demijohn. Cash for the crackers and the pickles and the fly paper. Look, what do you talk? 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 Where do you get it? What do you talk? You can talk, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk. You can bicker, 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 you can talk, you can talk. You can talk, 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 bicker, bicker, bicker. You can talk all you want, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't. No, it ain't. But you gotta know the territory. <laughs> Why, it's the multi Ford, made the trouble, made the people want to go, want to get, want to get, want to get up and go. 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 14, 22, 23 miles to the county seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who's going to patronize a little bitty two by four kind of store anymore? What do you talk? What do you talk? Where do you get it? At the Model T at all. Take a gander at the store, at the modern store, at the present day store, at the present day modern departmentalized grocery store. What do you talk? 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 Where do you get it? What do you Talk. What do you talk? What do you talk? Where do you get it? You can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, 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 bicker, 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 you can talk all you want, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, but you gotta know the territory. Why is the you need a biscuit made the trouble? You need a you need to put the crackers in a package, in a package, the you need a biscuit in an airtight center. Pack me the cracker barrel, obsolete, obsolete. Obsolete, obsolete, obsolete. Cracker barrel went out the window with the mail pouch, cut plug, charmed by the stove. Changed the approach of the traveling salesman. Made it pretty hard. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. But you gotta know the territory. Gone. Gone. Gone with the hogshead, cask and demi -junk. Gone with the sugar barrel, pickle barrel, milk pan. Gone with the tub and the pail and the tears. Ever meet a fellow by the name of uh, Hill? 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 No! Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never heard of any salesman in Hill. Now he doesn't know the territory. Doesn't know the territory. What's the fellow's line? Never worries about his line. Never worries about his line. Or the Cracker Barrel being obsolete, or the you need a biscuit in an airtight sanitary package, or the Model T Ford. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never worries about his line. Never worries about his line? Or a doggone thing. He's just a bang, beat, bell ringing, big haul, great go, neck or nothing, rip roaring, every time a bullseye salesman. That's Professor Harold Hill. Harold Hill. Tell us what's his line. What's his line? He's a fake, and he doesn't know the territory. Look, what do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? He's a music man. He's a what? He's a what? He's a music man, and he sells clarinets to the kids in the town with the big trombones and the rat-a-tat drums and the big brass bass, big brass bass, and the piccolo, the piccolo, uniforms too, with the shiny gold braid on the coat and a big red stripe running. Well, I don't know much about bands, but I do know you can't make a living selling big trombone. No, sir. Mandolin picks, perhaps, and here and there were Jews harp. No, the fella sells bands. Boys bands. I don't know how he does it. But he lives like a king, and he dallies, and he gathers, and he plucks, and he shines. And when the man dances, certainly, boys. What else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the man dances, certainly, boys. What else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he doesn't know the territory. River City. River City. River City. We're across the state line into Iowa. River City, population 2,212. Cigarettes, illegal in this state. What? Well, if you're all through, I'll tell you about Professor Harold Hill. You really know Harold Hill? Never saw him in my life, but I can tell you this much. He's given every one of us a black eye. Well, after he's worked a town over, the next salesman to come through gets immediately tarred and feathered and rode out of the city limits on a rail. <laughs> oh, you think that's funny? But wait till it happens to you. The hair never grows back. <laughs> Why should get rid of a town on a rail? Because in order to sell band instruments and uniforms 
and instruction books, he has to promise to teach the kids to play. Well? And to form them kids into a band with himself as the leader. Oh, well, what's wrong with that? He don't know one note from another. That's what's <laughs> wrong with that. And he don't know a bass drum from a pipe organ. I'll catch up with that swindling two-bit thimble rigger. When I do, I'll squeal on him so loud. Wow, you're mad, Charlie. You sure like to be around when you catch up with that fella. Yeah. Well, I won't be out here. Not in Iowa. Not even the great Professor Harold Hill would try to sell them neck boat Hawkeyes out here. What? Gentlemen, you intrigue me. I think I'll have to give Iowa a try. Don't believe I caught your name. What? if you want to go around in your drawers all day. And there I was, in Madison Hospital, and nobody come to see me. Cousin Will never come. Aunt Bertha never come. Your Aunt Bertha's dead. Well, she wouldn't have come anyway. We can be cold as a fall in the mountains in December. If we ask about the weather in July. And we're so by the stubborn we can stand touching those as far a week at a time and never see eye to eye. Squires? Yes, sir. I I'm interested in a rig for Sunday, if you could accommodate me. Well, I expect you ought to see the man in charge of hiring rigs. Who's late, as usual? Professor Harold Hill. Oh. <laughs> Say, what are you doing here anyway? Oh, why didn't you tell me you was coming? Oh, I didn't know I was myself. Oh. Besides, how could I know you'd wind up in a little tank town like this? You were a pretty big slicker when you were in business with me. Ah, too many close shaves with the way you work. Hey, besides, I got myself a nice, comfortable girl. Ethel Toffelmeyer, she's the boss's niece. Oh, gone legitimate, huh? I knew you'd come to no good. 
Oh, uh, what's the new pitch? Hmm? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, don't tell me you're in the band business again. I heard you was in steam automobile. I was. Oh, what happened? Somebody actually invented one. No. Now, give me the lowdown here, Morris. Ah, uh, you'll never get anywhere in the band business of these stubborn islands. Oh, besides, we got ourselves a stuck-up music teacher who'll expose you before you get your grip unpacked. Male or female? Oh, the music teacher? She's a librarian. Female. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. If she passes by, point her out to me. Oh, all right. So, how are you going to start your pitch? Oh, same old thing. Keep that music teacher off balance, and my next step will be to get your town out of the serious trouble it's in. Well, River City ain't in any trouble. Oh, then I'll have to create some. Oh. I have to create a desperate need for a boys' band. You remember. Now, what's new around here? What can I use? Oh, nothing. Oh, except that the billiard parlor got a new pool table. They never had a pool table here before. Eh, just billiards. That'll do. I'll see you later, Mars. And don't forget, music teacher. All right, music teacher. Aha, uh -huh. you're Mr. Dunlop? Yep. Well, either you are closing your eyes to a situation you don't wish to acknowledge, or you are unaware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. Right here, I say, trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud, I say, I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Helps you cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? Well, just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a bulk line game. I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinched back suit. And listening to some big out-of-town Jasper, hearing him tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trotting race, no, but a race where they sat down right on the horse. Do you want to see some stuck-up jockey boy sitting on Dan Patch? Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. And all week long, your River City youth will be frittering away. I say, your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noontime, supper time, chore time, too. Get the ball in the pocket. Never mind getting dandelions pulled, or the screen door patched, or the beefsteak pounded. Never mind pumping any water till your parents are caught with a cistern empty on a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Oh, yes, you've got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker, shirt tail young ones, peeking in the pool hall wind after school. Trouble. Folks, right here in River City, trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. No, I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm gonna be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around that hall? They'll be trying out Bevo, trying out Cubebs, trying out tailor-maids like cigarette fiends, and bragging all about how they're gonna cover up a telltale breath with sense. And one fine night, they leave the pool hall, heading for the dance at the armory. Libertine men and scarlet women and ragtime. Shameless music that'll grab your son, your daughter, to the arms of the junk animal instinct, mass area. Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground. Trouble! Oh, yes, right here in River City. Right here in the capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. That stands for pool. You surely got trouble. You got trouble. Right here in River City. Right here. Got to figure out a way to keep the young ones moral after school. children, Mothers of River City, heed the warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The moment your son leaves the house, does he rebuckle his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? A dime novel hidden in the corn crib? Is he memorizing jokes from Captain Billy's whiz bag? A certain Certain words creeping into his conversation. Words like, like swell. Aha. And so's your old man. Well, if so, my friends, 
You got trouble oh, yes. right, here right here in River City. Oh, at the capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Stands for you surely got trouble. They surely got trouble. Right here in River City. Right here. Remember the main, the North Rock, and the Golden Rule. Our children's children can have trouble. Yes, you got trouble. You're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 numbered balls is the devil's tool. The devil's tool. Oh, yes, you got trouble. Trouble, trouble. Oh, yes, you got trouble. Here we got big, big trouble. With a T. Excuse me, did you drop this? No. Say, haven't I seen you somewhere before? No. You know, I'm only in town for a short while and... Good. you, daughter? Yes, Mama. Keep on, Amaryllis. I'll be there in a minute. Remember the library being opened last Fourth of July? Oh, it was, Mama, all evening. Mama, a man with a suitcase has been following me all over town. Oh, who? Oh. I never saw him before. Did he say anything? He tried. Did you say anything? Mama! Of course not. Now don't dawdle, Amaryllis. So do la re ti me a little slower, and please keep the fingers curved as nice and high as you possibly can. Don't get faster, dear. If you don't mind me saying so, it wouldn't have hurt you to find out what the gentleman wanted. <laughs> I know what the gentleman wanted. What, dear? You'll find it in Balzac. Excuse me for living. But I've never read it. Neither has anyone else in this town. There you go again with that same old comment about the low mentality of River City people and taking it all too much to heart. Now, Mama, as long as the Madison Public Library was entrusted to me for the purpose of improving River City's cultural level, I can't help my concern that the ladies of River City keep ignoring all my counsel and advice. But darling, when a woman has a husband and you've got none, why should she take advice from you? Even if you can quote Balzac and Shakespeare and all them other highfalutin Greeks. Mama, if you don't mind my saying so, you have a bad habit of changing every subject. No, I haven't changed the subject. I was talking about that stranger. What stranger? With the suitcase who may be your very last chance. Mama! 
do you think that I'd allow a common masher? Now really, Mama, I have my standards where men are concerned, and I have no intention. I know all about your standards, and if you don't mind me saying so, there's not a man alive who could hope to measure up to that blend of Paul Bunyan, St. Pat, and Noah Webster. You can cost it for yourself out of your Irish imagination, your Iowa stubbornness, and your library full of books. Well, if that isn't the best I've ever heard. Thank you. Can I have a drink, please? <laughs> May, May I? May I have a drink, please? Yes, dear. Winthrop, it's after dark. Is that a way to come into a house? Hello? That won't do at all. I'll have a kiss from my boy. The lady over there is your sister, young man. <laughs> Hello, Winthrop. Winthrop, where's your manners? I'm having a party on Saturday. Will you please come? I would like it especially very much if you'd come, Winthrop. Well, Winthrop, Amaryllis has asked you to her party. Are you going, or aren't you? No. No what? No, thank you. You know the little girl's name? He won't say Amaryllis because of the S because of his lips. He's ashamed. We know all about his lips, Amaryllis. Well, Winthrop. I'll bet he won't say it. No, thank you, Amaryllis. Amaryllis, the Amaryllis. <laughs> Why does he get so mad at people just because he lifts? It's not only because he lifts, Samarillis. That's just part of it. Well, what's the other part? Never mind, dear. It's just that he never talks very much. Not even to you and your mother? We all have to be a little patient. I am patient, even though he doesn't ever talk to me. But I do him every night. I say goodnight to him on the evening star. You have to do it the very second you see it, too, or it doesn't count. Good night, my Winthrop. Good night. Sleep tight. <laughs> oh, there, darling, don't cry. You have lots of time. If not, Winthrop, there'll be others. Never. I'll end up an old maid like you. I'm sorry, Miss Marion. Can I play my cross hand piece? May I play May my... May I play my cross hand piece? You may. You see, without a sweetheart, you'll have no one to say goodnight to on the evening star. I know, Amaryllis. But, but for the time being, just say goodnight, my someone. You can put the name in when the right someone comes along. All right. Better than nothing. Yes, it is. Now you can play your crosshand piece. Now I may play my crosshand piece.
sure we're all grateful to my wife, you Laylee McKechnie Shin for leading the singing. And to J.C. Squires, our fine stereo optican slides. And Ethel Toppelmeyer, our fine player, piano player. Piano. As mayor of River City, I welcome you, River City Zeans, to the annual 4th of July exercises set up for the indoors here at Madison Gymnasium. I count the weather. Four score. Four score. Ah, the members of the school board will now present a patriotic tableau. Uh, the members of the school board will not present a patriotic tableau. Some disagreement about the costumes, I suppose. Instead, the Watan Yi girls of the local wigwam of Hiawatha will present the spectacle My Wife. Uh, in which my wife, you Laylee McKechnie Shin, will take a leading part. to 20 in the Indian tongue. In, tin, tother, feather, Disgrace to our city. Four score and seventy years ago. The Payne's fireworks spectacle, last days of Pompeii, will take place. Provided the rain stops by 9 30. It'll be out to the Madison Picnic Park in the farm meadow, across the creek from the pest house. Well now, how could it be raining? Didn't the Gazette predict fair? Sure did, Ewart. That's why we're all prepared for a storm. Now, my gazette is accurate most of the time. And you know, well, you wasn't last long in the banking business. If you was accurate most of the time. Now, just a minute. Let's have order here. Order! Looks like number eight's late again. Well, I make her early. Oh, she's late, all right. Look at her. Will you members of the school board stop bickering in public? Never mind. Four score and seven years. We heard there's a pool table in town. Now, just a minute. Is it a pool table or isn't it? Will you allow me to get on with the exercises? You don't want any more exercises until it's pool table. Protect our children! Resist sin and corruption! Smite that devil and keep our young boys pure! Friends, may I have your attention, please? Your attention, please! I can deal with this trouble, friends, with a wave of my hand, this very hand. Please observe me, if you will. I'm Professor Harold Hill. And I'm here to organize the River City Boys Band. Brrr. 
Now think, my friends, how could any pool table ever hope to compete with a gold trombone? Ra, 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 da, da, ra, da, ra, ra. Remember, my friends, what a handful of trumpet players did to the famous fabled walls of Jericho. Oh, billiard parlor walls come a tumbling down. Well, a band will do it, my friend. Oh, yes, I mean a boys' band, do you hear me? And I say River City's got to have a boys' band, and I mean she needs it today. Well, Professor Harold Hill's on hand. River City's going to have a boys' band. Sure as the Lord made little green apples, that band is going to be in uniform. John, Willie, Teddy, Fred. And you'll see the glitter of crashing cymbals. You'll hear the thunder of rolling drums, the shimmer of trumpets. Tan -ta -dum! And you'll feel something akin to the electric thrill I once enjoyed when Gilmore, Liberati, Pat Conway, the great creator, W.C. Handy, and John Philip Sousa all came to town on that very same historic day! 76 trombones led the big parade with 110 cornets right behind. They were followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuosos, the cream of every famous band. 76 trombones got the morning sun with 110 cornets right behind. There were more than a thousand reeds springing up like weeds. There were horns of every shape and kind. There were copper bottom timpani and horse platoons thundering, thundering all along the way. Double bell euphoniums and big bassoons. Each bassoon having his big fat say. There were 50 mounted cannon in the battery. Thundering, thundering all along the way. Clarinets of every size, trumpeters would improvise a full octave higher than the score.
emergency action. That man is a spellbinder. I haven't seen Iowa people get this excited since the night that Frank Gotch and Strangler Lewis lay on the mat for three and a half hours without moving a muscle. Boy, was that exciting. Never mind, get that spellbinder's credentials. Grab that hoodlum. He almost blew up Mrs. Shin. Thank you, Professor. Got to make an example out of him. Ringleader, you know. What he does, the gang does. Jimmy Klein, let me go. You wild kid, you. Hang around my oldest girl. His father's one of them day laborers working south of town. You wild kid, you. Tagging down Main Street after my oldest girl last Sunday. Well, that wasn't either tagging. Don't you counterdict me. Are we just walking together, Chili Clyde. You watch your phraseology. I know what you was doing. My little Gracie seen you. Now you stay away from my oldest girl, or you'll hear from me tell who laid the rails. Hill, I'll talk to you Monday morning about this band thing. Over at City Hall, 10 o'clock sharp. Men. I want that spellbinder's credentials. Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. Oh, you don't know this fellow. He's tough, and he's got his gang waiting outside. Oh, well, I, I'll be careful. Tommy, I want to talk to you about the band. Hi, Chief Professor. That's for the little kids. Oh, not about playing in the band. You're uh, mechanically minded, aren't you? You ever do anything with perpetual motion? Oh, well, I nearly had it a couple times. You did? <laughs> You're my man. Why, do you realize that no one has ever invented a music holder for a marching piccolo player? No place to hang the music. Oh, Geely Klein, I wonder where I could get some wire from. Look in the cellar. That's where people keep wire. Oh, oh Tommy, Tommy. Now, Constable, I'll show you how you break up a gang. Oh, miss, young lady, what's your name? Uh, Zanita, I had no idea you were beckoning to me. Oh, <laughs> God. Uh, do you know Tommy Gillis? Um, well, uh, I... Uh, Tommy, this is Zanita. Escort the young lady home. Oh, I'll only accept, and I'm not going home. I have to go to the library. <laughs> God. Well, then escort the young lady home by way of the library. Uh, oh. By way of the candy kitchen. Yes, sir. Uh, do I have to? You have to. Well, yes, sir. He <laughs> got. Uh, you're a pretty bright young man, Professor. You did make a couple of mistakes, though. Oh? The billiard parlor belongs to Mayor Shin. Oh. And the pool table, I suppose, yeah, too. What was my other mistake? That's Zanita. She's the mayor's oldest girl. Oh. Hold oh, uh, up. Just, just a minute there, Professor. We need to see your credentials. We're the school board. Oh, no. Uh, academic certificate. Oh, no, nothing of the kind. We need uh, letters and papers. Make him put up a bond. Wait. What am I hearing? Say, uh, ice cream. Ice cream? Oh, I don't sing if that's what you're implying, though. Oh, well, then just talk it. Uh, down here. Ice cream. Now. Talk slow. Ice cream. <laughs> you see, singing is just sustained talking. Now you, sir. Uh, uh, ice cream. Now you, sir. Ice cream. Now you, sir. Ladies, from now on, you'll never see one of these men without the other three. Professor, you're wrong. Why, those men have hated each other for 15 years. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. How can there be any sin in sin? If 
Goodbye, tell me what can be fair in farewell, dear. While one single star shines above, how can there be any sin in sin, sin? Aren't we sincerely in love? Oh, in love. Excuse me. I don't suppose you live alone or anything? No. Say, you know, I've got some wonderful caramels up in my hotel room, if you'd care to come Mr. up. Mr. Hill! <laughs> That's, uh, Professor Hill. <laughs> Professor? Of what? At what college do they give a degree for annoying women on the street, like a Saturday night rowdy at a public dance hall? Well, I wouldn't know about that. I'm a conservatory man myself. Gary Conservatory, gold medal class of Art Five. Even should that happen to be true, does that give you the right to follow me around wherever I go? Another thing, Mr. Hill, I'm not as easily hoodwinked or mesmerized as some of the people in this town. And I think it only fair to warn you that I have a shelf full of reference books in there that may very well give me some interesting information about you. I'm Marcellus, and don't call me Greg. Oh, right, right. So, uh, how'd you make out with a music teacher? <laughs> Scrumptious. Ate out of my hand the minute I tipped my hat. She did? Mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> Say, you should have cut a swath tonight. Hey, for a second, even I thought you knew something about leading a boy's band. <laughs> oh, just like when you used to imitate that, uh, that band concert fella down in Joplin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, but that was kid stuff. Oh, I'm in rare form these days, Sutton. You just keep your eyes on me for the next four weeks. Four weeks? But it used to only take uh, ten days for the instruments to arrive. Still does. It takes four weeks for the uniforms. Oh, no, Greg. Oh, don't tell me you've added uniforms. The uniforms and instruction books. Uh, instruction books? But you can't pass yourself off as any music teacher. Well, not for any four weeks. Mars. Oh, but you don't know one note from another. No. But I've discovered this revolutionary new method called the Think System, where you don't bother with the notes. Yes, but in four weeks, people are going to want to hear some music. You'll have to lead a band. Mm. But when the uniforms arrive, they'll forget everything else, at least long enough for me to collect and leave. Oh, this is a refined operation, son. And I've got it timed right down to the last wave of the brakeman's hand on the last train out of town. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Washburn, Oh, you're going to line yourself up with a little canoodling, eh? Well... <laughs> hey, I could set you up with Ethel's sister. Well, she's a wonderful girl. Teaches Sunday school. Oh, no wide-eyed, eager, wholesome, innocent Sunday school teacher for me. <laughs> that kind of girl spins webs no spider ever... Now, listen, son. A girl who trades on all that purity merely wants to trade my independence for her security. The only affirmative she will file Refers to marching down the aisle No golden, glorious, gleaming, pristine goddess No, sir, for no Diana do I play fawn I can tell you that right now I snarl, I hiss How can ignorance be compared to bliss? I spark, I fizz For the lady who knows what time it is I cheer and I rave for the virtue I'm too late to save. The sadder but wiser girl for me. No bright-eyed, blushing, breathless baby doll baby. No, sir, that kind of child ties knots. No sailor revenue. I prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. No dewy youngness who keeps resisting all the time she keeps insisting. No wide-eyed, wholesome, innocent female. No, sir, 
She's the fisherman, I'm the fish you see. Flop! I flinch, I shy. When the lass with the delicate air goes by, I smile. I grin when a gal with a touch of sin walks in. I hope and I pray for Hester to win just one more A. The sadder but wiser girl's the girl for me. The sadder but wiser girl for me. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, Professor Hill, we're all agog, simply agog. On the QV. Everyone is so excited about the band. I'm Ethel Toffelmeyer, the Pianola girl. How do you do? And this is Mrs. Squires and Mrs. Hicks. And of course, you've met Eulalie McKechnie Shin, our mayor's wife. Oh, isn't it exciting, Eulalie? Oh, I couldn't say. I could not say. No, I could not say at this time. My husband will wish to investigate, I'm sure. And naturally, I'm reticent. Oh, yes, I'm reticent. Well, of course, I understand, Mrs. Shin, but you see, my music plan calls for a ladies' committee on the dance and... Oh, Mrs. Shin, oh, do that again. Your foot, the way you, the way you raised it just now. Oh, well, I, I do have a bunion here that oh. bothers me. What natural flow of rhythm. What expression of, of line and movement. Mr. Hill. Mrs. Sheen, you must accept the, the chairmanship of the ladies' auxiliary on the classic dance. Mustn't she, ladies? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Sheen, every move you make bespeaks Del Sartre. Will you, will you say yes, Mrs. Shin? Oh, you Lady McKechnie Shin. <laughs> and I, well, I, I, uh, uh, well, I, dancing? Oh, well. <laughs> then you accept it? Yes, indeed. Uh. <laughs> and I would like to say Thank you, that thank I... you, thank you. <clears throat> and now about the young lady who plays the piano. Uh, Marion Peru, I believe her name is. Oh. Well, after all, she, she is the town librarian. Pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, chip, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, chip, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, chip, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, chip, 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 Her kind of woman shouldn't belong on any committee. Of course, I shouldn't tell you this, but she advocates dirty books. Dirty books? Chaucer! Rabelais! Balzac! And the worst thing, of course, I shouldn't tell you this, but she... I'll tell. The man lived on my street. Let me tell. Stop. I'll tell. She made brazen overtures to a man who didn't have a friend in this town till she came here. Old Miser Madison. Miser Madison? Madison Gymnasium? Madison Picnic Park? Madison Hospital, that miser, Madison? Exactly. Who'd he think he was anyway? Well, I should say, what a show-off. <laughs> I believe he gave the town the library, too, didn't he? Well, that's just it. When he died, he left the library building to the city, but he left all the books to her. She was seen going and coming from his place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That woman made brazen overtures with a gilt edge guarantee. She had a golden glint in her eye and a silver voice with a counterfeit ring. Melt her down and you'll reveal a lump of lead as cold as steel here, where a woman's heart should be. He left River City, the library building, but he left all the books to her. Chaucer! Yes, yes, of course. Uh, well, I have just what you want over at the hotel. Come with me. Oh. Good night, ladies. 
I know everything, and it doesn't make any difference. What are you talking about? You were probably very young. Anyone can make a mistake. What? Please, no apologies, no explanations. I'm only in town for a short while, and, well, the sadder but wiser girl for me. Will you please make your selection and leave? Oh, I have. Well, what do you want to take out? The librarian. Shh! Quiet, please. The librarian. You're not listening, Marion. Look. Marion. Look. Marbles. Six dealies, eight aggies, a dozen peewees, and one big glassy with the American flag in the middle. I think I'll drop them. No! Shh. Madam Librarian. Oh, what can I do, my dear, to catch your ear? I love your manly, manly, madam librarian. Marion, heaven help us if the library caught on fire and the volunteer hose brigademan had to whisper the news to Marion. Madam librarian. Oh, what can I say, my dear, to make it clear? I need your badly, badly, madam librarian. Marion, if I stumble and I busted my watch and call it, I could lie on your floor unnoticed till my body had turned to Marion. Madam librarian. But in the moonlight, a man could sing it. In the moonlight. And a fellow wouldn't know that his darling had heard every word of the song. With the moonlight helping along. But when I try in here to make it clear, I love your madly, madly, madam librarian, Marion. Long lost cause I can never win, for the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian, such as Marion. Madam Librarian.
Tuesday at the high school. Marshmallow, not a librarian. Tommy, it was a pretty successful morning. Eleven sales out of twelve tries. I'll tell you what, it's almost noon. Why don't you go on home and get some dinner? I'll try a couple by myself. All right. Goodbye, Professor. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> Just a minute here. Are you soliciting? You haven't got a license. Oh, uh, no, no, Mr. Mayor. You see, I, uh, I collect door knockers, and uh, uh, this particular specimen has an exceptional tone quality. Flattery I... will not avail you. No. Soliciting is statutory in this county. Oh. Malfeasance without a permit. Why haven't you been down to City Hall with your references? No, oh, I, uh, I, I just missed no, you. No. I, oh, no, Mr. Mayor. Oh, you your hand! Oh, no. What? What? Oh. oh, the spread of the little finger is hereditary. Oh, it is? Oh, yes. What does that mean? No, that means that your son's little finger is perfectly situated to operate the spit valve on a B-flat flugelhorn. Is that good? Good! Why, it means that America has produced at last an artist who is able to flugel the minute waltz in 50 seconds. How can I get one of them horns? Sign here. And now that'll be a $17 import fee. Oh, yes, sir. And just think, I could have missed this hold. I haven't got any son. Oh. You unscrupulous flu by night. You unflipulous. I, I, I... You'll be down to City Hall with your by God references by 3 o'clock. You mean this afternoon? I couldn't make myself any plainer if I was a Quaker on his day off. Uh, <laughs> Miss Pearl, 
Good evening. Why, Mrs. Peru, do you realize that, that you have the facial characteristics of a cornet virtuoso? I don't know if I understand you entirely, Professor. If your son has the same firm chin, the same splendid cheek muscles, oh, by George, not that he'd ever be really great, you understand. Oh, is that so? And in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see, all really great cornet players are Irish. Oh, Clark, oh, oh, Mendez, oh, Stein. But, Professor, we are Irish. No. No. Well, that clinches it. Sign here. Your son was born to play the cornet. <laughs> oh, thank you. Now, there'll be $7 earnest money. Not another penny due until the first installment payable at the opening of band practice. Ah, uh, thank you, thank you. And now, of course, I'll need your son's measurements for his uniform. His uniform? Oh, well, hello there, son. It's certainly his uniform. And not a penny due until delivery. That gives him four weeks to enjoy. To anticipate, to imagine, all at no cost, whatever. Never allow the demands of tomorrow to interfere with the pleasures and the excitements of today. Would it have a, a... A stripe? Uh, certainly, my boy. A big, wide red one on both sides. What do you think of that? Oh. Oh. You'll have to excuse Winthrop, Professor. We can't get him to say three words a day, even oh. to us. And if you can get him to play in the band, oh, you'll have St. Paul and Michael's own way with you. But if anybody can do it, I'll bet you can. Out of the crowd, I pick you for a hod-carrying, clay pipe smoking, shamrock wearing, harp playing, maverneen pinching, terrace hall minstrel singing Irishman. <laughs> <laughs> be gobs and be jabbers. Where are you from, me boy? Gary, Indiana. I knew it, Gary. Where'd you say? Gary, Indiana. As a matter of fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. Was she now? <laughs> oh, yes. As a matter of fact, uh, gold medal class of Art Five. How to do, Miss Peru? How to do, Mr. Hill? Peru, of course. I thought I knew that name from somewhere. Say, I've been trying to see you since the other evening. He wants to put Winthrop in the band. We're not interested, Mama. But Marion, the boy might have his father's musical gift. He does have my jaw, you know. Your husband's musical, eh? Say, I'd like to have do a chat with him. Do you burst in I'm... on everyone's home like this? Prying into personal affairs? We're not interested. Marion. Well, that's one for and one against. Oh, why not let the boy's father decide? The boy's father is dead. Anything else? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. But that's all the more reason why your brother needs something like My this. My brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. And as to your musical tricks, Mr. Hill, why don't you go into business with some nice carnival man who sells gold-painted watches and glass diamond rings? Musical tricks? Well, Miss Peru, I hardly think that... <laughs> well, I think she likes the idea. A little cautious, perhaps, but, but I admire that in a woman. Just keep me alive, and I'll be back later in the week. One moment, Professor Hill. Hmm? About the boy's measurements, oh. I make all his clothes. Sleeve 21, waist 18, crouch 14. Fine, fine, <laughs> that's all I need. No, I really must get back to the hotel. <laughs> Professor, I do hope you'll excuse Marion. She's not really... Oh, no need to worry at all. I'm sure deep down at heart, She's just as lovely a person as you are yourself. Good day to you, Winifred. Oh. Has he gone? He 
has, and I hope not forever. Darling, don't you ever think of your future? Gary in the Indiana Conservation Class of Art Five. Now, darling. Now, Mama. Surely a girl's future doesn't depend on encouraging every fast-talking, self-centered, woman-chasing traveling man who comes to town. And the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not, in this particular case, impress me. All right, darling, all right. Only it's a well-known principle that if you keep the flint in one drawer and the steel in another, You'll never strike much of a fire. Mama! Uh, Winthrop! Winthrop, I know you're there. Will you please go to the library and ask Miss Grubb for the book I set aside? It's the Indiana State Educational Journal, 1890 to 1910. It's a large green volume with gold corners. Do I have to? You won't have to talk to anyone. I've written it all down. Thank you, dear. Now, what are you up to? Why do you need books at this hour of the night? I have a feeling that the Indiana Journal may help me poke some large holes in the professor's claims. <laughs> well, I give up at your age, if you don't mind me asking. What kind of a white knight do you expect to come riding along? Well, I'm not waiting for Luther Greiner, who backs me into the ancient history shelf every time he comes into the library. He does. Or Ed Gamage and that buggy of his, with the removable back seat. But I'm not waiting for a knight in shining white armor, either. My white knight, not a Lancelot.
show you my invention. What invention? My musical, the Fur Marching Piccolo Player. Well, it still has a couple of minor flaws. You see, well, when you hold your arm tight enough to keep the music steady, you cut off your circulation and you can't wiggle your fingers. Meanwhile, you could go blind. Oh, Tommy, there's Papa. Well, is that the first thing I said or not? Yes, George. Yes, the very first thing I said. Or I'll eat hay with a horse. Get that spelled Viner's credentials, I said. Morning of July 1st, 19 and 12. And now look, my wife is out boodling around, dancing at any and all hours of the night instead of in the home. But George... The members of the school board are out singing up street and down alley instead of tending to city matters. My oldest girl is out boodling around with some wild kid. And my business has fallen off so far, I can't even find the balance sheet. Mayor Shen, I found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. Is who? His university? Oh, that. I already know all about that. In fact, that's all I can ever get out of him. Gary Conservatory, class of Ot 5. But if you'll just take some time to read a little bit about the university, you won't have to look any farther. It's on page 311, what? paragraph 2. Well, Wells, Wells Fargo's wagon is coming up from the depot. The Wells, Wells Fargo, Fargo wagon? Huh? A likely story. At this hour of the day, nonsense. <laughs> Wells Fargo wagon. Uh huh. It could be the band instruments. The band instruments. <laughs> oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. Oh, please let it be for me. Oh, the Wells Fargo wagon is a coming down the street. I wish I wish I knew what it could be. I got a box of maple sugar on my birthday. in due course. In the meantime, keep off the streets. Get acquainted with your instruments. And don't forget, think, think, think the minuet in G. la di da di da di da di da la di da Sister, sister, isn't this the most scrum and so good thing you ever saw? I never thought I'd see such a scrum and so good thing. Oh, sister. Round one for you, Professor Hill. But I'd better hear some by God tootin' out of them horns in pretty short order. 
or I'll see you in front of the grand jury over at the county seat. Now, Miss Marion, about that book. Come, George. Tempest Fugits. You watch your phraseology. Get on home. Got to get something from the librarian. Now, about that book. Ladies' Dance Committee meets Tuesday night at the high school. <laughs>